Career Tools for Product Design, Development, and Engineering. She has several patents related to immersive environments. She received her BS in Industrial Technology and Computer Science from Eastern Michigan University. Go Hurons. <laughs> Please welcome Elizabeth Barron. and then kind of jump to the future. So I think this is a fascinating uh, data point to consider for all of us. Uh, back over 50 years ago, a gentleman named Doug Douglas Engelbart put together what later became known as the mother of all demos. So we like hand raising, so who's heard of this? Anyone? Yep, we got a few. And uh, so what this was was the first basic uh, like implementation of using uh, a total compute paradigm like we think of today. So it was the first implementation of the use of a mouse, uh, of a word processor, of global, of, oh, sorry, local collaboration, of uh, many other things, even like uh, hypertext, which became the internet. And then uh, actual real-time uh, collaboration, like Google Docs, where one person in Menlo Park was modifying a document that could be seen in San Francisco. And so th just think, this is over 50 years ago, and Google Docs seem like, seems like a cool new thing that's you know less than a decade old. And so the reason why I want to start this way is I, I think it's really uh, profound in many ways. First of all, I think it's really great that uh, this technology like in this set of technologies was put together so early. And it actually, the uh, DARPA, the DARPA net came the following year after this demo, which was through Bowline. Uh, but bringing that technology together and then thinking about when we started using CAD. So we started basically using CAD in the late 70s and 80s. But if we look at this and we think about where the technology was and what we were potentially capable of, and then when we ended up implementing technology, there's a gap. And so uh, I think it's interesting and important for us to consider that as the pace changes so drastically, our ability to adapt can be much more profound, really like uh, definitely tightening that gap of where we're at. And the other thing I think is really interesting is Engelbart, and we have to read this, his goal was about helping people work together to solve the world's biggest problems. So his actual goal of doing this was to try to bring information to you, more information to you, so that you could make smarter decisions faster. And 50 years ago, that's just super cool. And so from that, we kind of entered into uh, somewhat, I mean, it's debatable, but a golden age of design. We have this really great tech at our disposal, and we think about all the reviews that we do with what I would call flat screen, so like looking at something and getting information imparted to you and having a bunch of auxiliary information given to you, we really have come a long way with that kind of technology. And with that, we've been able to create some amazing vehicles. I know this is an older vehicle, but like some iconic vehicles that are out there that are just perfect form, beauty, uh, excitement, uh, performance, all of these characteristics that we want. And, and that's just lovely. But now it just seems to me that that's like a point of entry. Like that, you have to have that just to compete in the market. So things are different. And now we have this world that uh, the previous three speakers uh, went over very well, very eloquently about all of the things that go into what we need to do for uh, the next generation of automotive design. And it is uh, overwhelming. It's like, it's hard to wrap your mind around all of these different things and how they all connect the internet of things and our vehicles and autonomy and you know all of the a uh, myriad of things and ride sharing and different use cases and all that stuff. So we really have a lot more to think about. And we have gone from an experience that's 
like a fun in cabin experience with a cool vehicle that's either a utility or fun to uh, from engineering standpoint looking at things more like mission control where you know we all have this singular focus we're going to do this one thing and we've really gone to this area where now the 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 possibilities are endless and the use cases are varied and and kind of crazy to wrap my mind around at least just thinking about that steering wheel being behind them as they're just chilling it's it's a new paradigm and it's a, a new way of thinking and and what's interesting about it is uh, going back to Engelbert Engelbert he talked about collective intelligence and that's such a great term so his his thought was that if you could get a lot of information together and you could present it to people in a, a way that they can consume and understand at the time that they need it, that they would be able to make these smarter decisions that would make the world a better place. And that's just such a great concept. And context is key to that. And if you think about that in automotive, which is like you know where I grew up, um, I think about the ripple effect that happens. So when you can get information and you can uh, disseminate it to others in a way that is natural and good, uh, and that propagates throughout organizations. And I think it, it's, it's really where we need to go. And so this is like one of my favorite graphics to kind of bring home that concept because one of the things about the immersive, like virtual augmented mixed reality, that uh, spectrum of uh, suite of tools and way of working is, it is a new way of working. It is a new way in a lot of cases to understand and connect with the data that you have and the, the vehicles that you're developing, the interaction models, what people know, when they know it, all of that uh, good stuff. And so the immersive paradigm really lends itself naturally to providing data and context that represents a whole lot of verticals in companies in a way that lets other people who don't normally understand you, understand you. And, and that's critical. That, that is just so amazing when you can explain something to somebody else that has a totally different mindset to you. But because that information is presented in context, it really is impactful. And the other thing that's written on there is it says truth in data. When you use your data and you're not using like some offshoot or some like uh, representation of airflow, but like you've actually done a CFD and you bring that data in, I was really excited to hear about ANSYS. That opens up another whole set of amazing use cases where you can start really iterating through how you do product development how you impart your message to others. And so I want to challenge everybody here today and ask you uh, like, if you thought about uh, where you are today and where you want to go. Where are you with the technology? Where are you with the way you use the technology? And where do you want to go? And I think uh, there, there's just so much we can all do. And so, um, in a way, I think this is what we're, we're like with tech. We all have information, we're all looking at stuff, we're all next to each other, but we're not really communicating. And uh, that is um, not always the case, hopefully not always the case, but sometimes it is. And sometimes the, the way tech uh, gets deployed and designed, it, that just happens uh, kind of accidentally. It's just the way things turn out. And so I, I wanted to ask, if you looked at your organizations and you thought about the way you uh, do immersive uh, product development and manufacturing and all that uh, things that showed on that vertical, do you have a solution that's growing organically by 25% a year? And what I mean by that is, are you, is the, the te technology that you have, are people finding new use cases that you never thought of? Because every person has their own specialty, their, the thing that they're bringing to your company, and naturally, with well-crafted solutions, 
more and more use will happen because that paradigm is so strong and the way you communicate is so effective that when you really need to make those points, it will, it will just start to blossom and new and, and better things will happen and you'll get all these crazy requests from people and it's just great. Um, are you doing collaborative reviews with multiple people and can you get the data uh, like quickly and without fanfare where you, you don't have to do a whole bunch of prep and it takes you like a week to get in and uh, just look at something. And is it realistic based on the physical properties of the way light propagates in the scene? There's the, the GPU uh, ray tracing over there that you should check out, but are you looking at this data that has measured materials? Does it have you know, like uh, real structure, real integrity, engineering integrity behind that data. Is it based on how you work and what you have produced so far? Are you taking analytical data and representing it in a new way from the customer's perspective? So if, if this is a defrost, but if this is CFD data put in instead and shown from a customer's perspective. If, if those types of studies are really valuable, are you looking uh, like authentically at the data that you create, considering the platform and the pipeline by which your organization operates? Every company has, uh, I, I should, I think, uh, really great CAD tools, really great data management, a well-oiled machine in a lot of respects, but. What do you do with that data? And, and is it easy for you to get it and then act on it in a way that's meaningful and impactful to the organization? Are you considering the data that you have, including physical data? Uh, every automotive creates properties. We, they, they just do, and, and it's valuable. Uh, you can use those and augment them with the virtual world and get a ton of value out of it, and then learn, learn from that, learn what people are doing, actually train a model and learn uh, uh, some of the emotive things that people respond to, and then build up a, a understanding of what excites somebody about a design, and look at the data, and uh, reach and understand physically what people are doing. Use 3D printing to, for all of its glory, and create like really simple, things that you can interact with. Those things are not only green, you know, because you're not creating as much uh, you know, properties, but you're also creating data that is meaningful and you can really iterate quick and really turn things around. And it's an efficient and very natural way to work. And so are you getting data from a variety of sources that is you know, in context and then apply differently and shown differently for the message that you need to impart to the, the people that are going to need to make decisions based on whatever concerns that you have and reasons why you put this, uh, you know, some study together. And then uh, I also think about the, uh, we're talking a lot about machine learning and generative design and all of these things. We, we learn so much, we, we know so much information we throw away. So while we're in these immersive environments, we're looking, we're understanding, we're, we're concentrating on things, I wanna look at something and have information come to me about the thing I'm looking at. And then I want to take that, those learnings and then disseminate them through the organization so others can learn about the things that I have found out. And then I can learn something that somebody else found out that they can disseminate to me and then it, you can just see how that snowballs in a really elegant and, and wonderful way to propagating you know, information that teams need to know when they need to know it around your organization. And so uh, the challenge here is, like, do you want to take a chance at like, incremental improvements in the way you work and having um, what I see a lot is uh, silos of uh, goodness around product development and manufacturing and uh, serviceability and, and there's all these people and they're all doing the, the same thing or does your organization, your company have a strategy for how these tools can work together 
to bring you together as an organization because usually they're siloed like all of those different verticals are and all of the pockets of innovation. A lot of goodness can come out of that, but so much more can come out of it when you have a strategic plan for how the immersive paradigm will fit in to the way you do product creation. And so I think that when those things happen, this will be the new golden age of product creation. We will have new ways of understanding things and we will use the best of these technologies from machine learning, machine vision, uh, the amazing compute capacity that we have now, and then we'll be able to understand information in context and then communicate effectively together as a team uh, in ways that are, we're just starting to realize we can do right now. So thank you.